This is a companion video to the SDR CW transceiver video. That video focused mainly on the hardware, build method, and possible PA options, plus a little bit on the software. This time I want to take a deeper dive into the software side of things. To implement this part of the project, I chose to use two open source applications. One, QUISC, the GUI for frequency control and demodulation settings, in other words, the radio part of this project, and two, FLDigi to handle CW encoding decoding processes and also does the logging for you. Both applications have been around for a number of years and their authors have spent countless hours making them the useful tools that they are. So first, before going any farther, to their developers, I want to say thank you for making this project possible. Being open source brings the extra advantage that this robust software can be adapted to our specific needs. Now, out of the box, these two applications can talk to each other. That made getting started even easier, but once started, and having just one desktop screen to work with, I thought life would be a lot better if the two apps made more efficient use of this screen space. As you can see, their default screens either overlap each other or portions get clipped by the desktop's border. To me, of the two, Quisk looked to be the best candidate to split into two screens and leave FLDigi intact. Doing that, the composite GUI ended up looking like this. Generally speaking, the way I tune Quisk to a specific station is by clicking on a spike in the spectrum that looks interesting. Now, FL's Digi's decoder is optimized to work best at a specific audio frequency of the user's choosing. For this project, I settled on 750 Hz as that magic frequency. Predicated on that standard, I added to the mouse click event what I call an auto zero beat feature. So effectively, what happens when you click on the spectrum graph is the software looks for the strongest signal in that region and sets the transmit receive incremental tuning such that the receive signal will generate a 750 hertz tone. Now because of the internet nature of CW and my uncanny skill at being able to click on the signal just at the exact moment it quits sending, this routine doesn't always get it right. If it misses, I've added a separate zero beat button to the quiz console. Clicking this button forces the routine to try again. And most of the time, this second shot will get me there. But if it doesn't, I can use the mouse wheel in the spectrum display to fine tune the signal of interest. Now, I usually want to zero beat the station I'm working. By that I mean I want my transmit frequency to match that frequency of the distant station. But if that station starts to drift or it returns my call on a different frequency, then I'll use QUISC's built-in receiver incremental tuning slider and mouse wheel to keep the received tone at 750 Hz. This way, my transmit frequency remains fixed to the frequency where the QSO originated and we don't end up leapfrogging each other up and down the band. While on the subject of controlling the transmitted signal, let me point out that the first video devoted a fair amount of time to the process used to pass the transmit key stream from FL Digi out to the hardware. So I won't repeat that here, but if interested, suggest that you go to the 20 minute mark in that video and see what's going on. Next, I want to describe how, for this project, FL Digi's CW transmit mode has been modified. So let's start by reviewing how it normally works. 
In the traditional version of FL Digi, the operator uses a combination of macros and the keyboard to populate its send buffer. And then when his turn comes to transmit, the op clicks one of the transmit buttons or clicks a macro containing an embedded transmit command, which causes FL Digi to go from receive to transmit and begin sending whatever data is found in the send buffer. FL Digi will stay in the transmit mode until it receives a second command from the operator to switch back to receive. Again, this can emanate from a button click or via an embedded macro command. The takeaway here is that swapping from transmit to receive and back is done by separate intentional commands and require either additional keystrokes or moving and clicking the mouse button on some special area of the screen. For many digital modes, this is perfectly acceptable and in fact even desirable. But CW differs from most digital modes in that it uses an intermittent carrier to send its bitstream. Most CW ops take advantage of this by having their radio configured such that the station goes from receive to transmit by a simple key closure. In the hands of an experienced operator this can lead to much more conversational like QSOs. So, since the goal of this project is to simplify CW operations, FL Digi was modified to start sending the moment a character appears in its send buffer and then automatically revert back to receive when the last character has been sent. Some of you might miss this load the buffer and then fire approach, but overall I found this send as a type scheme to be an effective way to operate. Now the last set of features I want to review are those related to logging. From what I can tell today, the vast majority of ops use some kind of computer-based logging program and it seems especially true with those who routinely engage in CW operations. In fact, having a computer already dedicated to station operations is the basis for my rationale that this project can be implemented at the 100 watt level for under 150 bucks. Because if I already have this computer on my table for logging, why not use it as the radio too? and claim that I'm doing it at no additional cost. Now, with one exception, the out-of-the-box version of FL Digi had everything I wanted in a logging program. So let's look at how this works under FL Digi. It starts by entering a call sign into the call sign text box. If you've previously worked this station, all the station base fields will instantly populate with data collected from the earlier QSO. This quick flood of information is a good visual cue that we have talked before. And if I open the logbook listings, the last QSO I had with this station will be highlighted. From there I can see the notes taken from that last encounter giving me a better place to start with this QSO. On the other hand, if it's a totally new contact, clicking the globe icon can link FL Digi to the internet ham database of your choice. Because of its existing popularity, I use the QRZ website. I've found many ops have spent a fair amount of energy describing their either themselves or what they like about the hobby. Needless to say, this can also be a great conversation starter and often helps to move the QSO beyond my QTH is and the temp here is. Now, switching to 8X, we'll follow this QSO to its conclusion and see the steps used to log it.
But as we all know, a good QSO must come to an end. When that happens, and assuming that you have an ARWL slash LOTW account, <coughs> FLDigi supports macro commands that will automatically push your QSO via TQSL to LOTW. Now, as stated earlier, I use QRZ and like to maintain a logbook there as well. So while all the features just described are native to FLDigi, this project's version has been modified to do posts to the QRZ logbook. And because I push a little more detail to the QRZ than to LOTW, I have FLDigi set up to execute the QRZ posts under the LOTW menu option rather than using the LOTW macro command method. That may sound confusing, but have found it to be a convenient way to take advantage of what was already embedded in FLDigi. If you want to use this feature, then before compiling FLDigi, you'll need to find in the source code the logbook.cxx file and enter your unique QRZ API key and then compile the code. This is going a little deeper than I want to in an overview video, so let me stop here and say that the compile process for the project's version of FLDigi is exactly the same as working with it from its official website. Thanks for watching. I hope this video has given you some sense of the power of this software and how easy it is to be rag chewing on CW. Goodbye and good luck with your next project.